Hello everyone! In this Control Engineering Robotics and Control Theory tutorial, we explain how to design parameters of proportional integral controllers by using the route Hurwitz stability test. We explain how to determine the range of values of proportional and integral controllers that guarantee the asymptotic stability of the closed loop system. Also, we simulate the dynamics of the closed loop system in MATLAB to verify the analytic computations. Here is a brief summary of the problem that we solve in this video tutorial. We assume that the model of the plant is given by this differential equation, where y is the output and u is the control input. The proportional integral controller is given by this equation, where k is the proportional gain and ki is the integral gain. K and KI are the control gains or control parameters that we need to determine. Our design objective is to determine the range of values of K and KI such that the closed loop system composed of the plant and the controller is asymptotically stable. Asymptotic stability will ensure that the closed loop system will be able to track the desired reference signals. We solved this problem by using the route Hurwitz stability test. As the result, we obtained the graph shown over here. This region is called the stability region, and it represents the region of values of K and Ki that guarantee the asymptotic stability of the closed loop system. The control design method explained in this video tutorial can be generalized to other model types as well as to higher order systems. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial, as well as more than 450 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start with explanations. This figure shows a basic block diagram of a control system. The block denoted by P denotes the plan. In the control engineering terminology, the plant is a dynamical system that we want to control. The block denoted by C is a controller or a control algorithm. The reference signal or the desired input signal is denoted by R. The control signal, which is the output of the control block and the input to the plant, is denoted by U. The output of the system is denoted by Y. The output is the quantity measured by sensor. The control error E is defined as a difference between the reference signal R and the output of the system Y. In this tutorial, we assume that the plant is mathematically described by this differential equation. As I mentioned previously, Y is the output of the system and Y dot and Y double dot are the first and second time derivatives of the system output Y. In this tutorial, we assume the particular form of the model. However, everything explained in this video tutorial can be generalized to second-order plants with arbitrary model coefficients as well as to higher-order plants. On the other hand, the standard form of the proportional integral or PI control algorithm is given by this equation. In this equation, k is the proportional control gain or the proportional control parameter and ki is the integral control gain or the integral control parameter. Our goal is to select the control parameters k and ki such that the closed loop system given in this figure is asymptotically stable. Asymptotic stability of the closed loop system means that the control error e will asymptotically approach zero as time approaches infinity. Zero control error means that the output of the system will asymptotically approach the reference signal. As E approaches zero, we can see that Y approaches R. And by looking at this graph, we can see that as time goes to infinity, the output of the system will approach the desired control signal R. And this means that our control objective will be achieved. We solved this problem by using the route Hurwitz stability test. In our previous tutorial given over here, we explained the basics of the route Hurwitz stability test. In order to make this video tutorial as short as possible, we will not explain the route Hurwitz stability test in this video tutorial. 
Instead, we will provide a link to the Route Horowitz Stability Test tutorial in the description below this video tutorial. To summarize, before proceeding with this video tutorial, it's a good idea to get yourself familiar with the Route Horowitz Stability Test. We will just apply the Route Horowitz Stability Test in this video tutorial. To solve our control design problem, we need to compute the transfer function of the plant and the transfer function of our controller. To compute the transfer function of the plant, we apply the Laplace transform to our equation. And here is the result. So what's the idea over here? The Laplace transform of y double dot is s squared multiplying y of s, where y of s is the Laplace transform of the time domain signal y. And similarly, Laplace transform of 5 y dot is actually 5s multiplying y of s. And in the same manner, we obtain the other terms in this equation. Over here, capital U of s is the Laplace transform of the time domain signal u of t. From this equation, we obtain the transfer function of the plant given by this equation. Let's apply the Laplace transform to our control equation. By applying the Laplace transform to the control equation, we obtain this equation. In this equation, capital E of S is the Laplace transform of the time domain signal lowercase e of t. The Laplace transform of e of t is capital E of S. Laplace transform of this integral term is actually ki over s multiplying capital E of s. This is a well-known fact in control theory. The Laplace transform of an integral is simply 1 over s. From this equation, we obtain the transfer function of the controller. To solve this problem, we need to derive the transfer function of the closed-loop system. The transfer function is given by this equation. It's the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output and the Laplace transform of the reference signal R. It's given over here. Now, from this block diagram, we can see that the output is actually transfer function of the plant multiplying the transfer function of the controller and multiplying the Laplace transform of our error. On the other hand, the error in the complex Laplace domain is defined by this signal. It's simply r of s minus y of s. Now, by substituting this equation in this equation, we obtain this equation. From this equation, by grouping the terms containing y of s, we obtain this equation. And finally, we obtain the transfer function of the closed loop system. The transfer function is p of s multiplying c of s divided by 1 plus p of s multiplying c of s. This equation immediately gives us the characteristic polynomial of the closed-loop system. And here is the characteristic polynomial. The characteristic polynomial is obtained by setting the denominator of the transfer function to zero. The zeros of the characteristic polynomials, that is, the values of s for which this equation is equal to zero, determine the stability of the closed-loop system. If all the zeros of the characteristic polynomial are in the left half of the complex plane, then the system is asymptotically stable. Next, let us substitute the values for p of s and c of s in this equation. The values are given over here and over here. Then, after performing this task and after several algebraic manipulations, we finally obtain the characteristic polynomial of the closed loop system. Now, the goal is to find the range of values of k and ki such that the zeros of this polynomial are strictly in the left half of the complex plane. From the route Hurwitz stability test, we know that the first necessary condition for asymptotic stability is that all the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial have to be positive. The equivalent statement is that all the coefficients have to have the same sign. Let's analyze the coefficients. The coefficients are 1, 5, 6 plus k, and ki. 1 and 5 are positive. 
This implies that we need to have the following. Ki has to be larger than 0 and 6 plus k has to be larger than 0. This is the first necessary condition. Next, we need to determine the sufficient conditions on the range of values of k, i, and k that will guarantee the asymptotic stability of the closed loop system. The route array for testing the stability is given over here. We have two columns, the first column and the second column. The first column is the most important. According to the route curve its stability test, all the coefficients in the first column of the route array have to be positive in order to guarantee asymptotic stability. By analyzing the first column, we conclude immediately that Ki has to be positive, and from this equation, we obtain this equation. That is, K should be larger than Ki over 5 minus 6. The system of inequalities in the equation 18 actually define a region in this plane. On the horizontal axis, we place the values of Ki. On the vertical axis, we place the values of K. This first condition tells us that Ki should be greater than 0. This means that we are considering this part of the plane. That is the values of Ki for which Ki is positive. However, we have another equation, or better to say, another inequality given over here. If we set k is equal to ki over 5 minus 6, we will obtain the straight line. And this straight line is given by this equation. It represents the stability boundary. Now, this line that is the value ki is equal to 0, here's the line, and this line defines this stability region. If you pick any point from this stability region, we will obtain two values. We will obtain the value for ki and the value for k. And these values will guarantee asymptotic stability of the system. Next, let us verify our analytic computations by simulating the closed-loop system response in MATLAB. This MATLAB script defines the controller and plant and simulates the closed-loop response of the system. The idea over here is to pick a point from the stability region and to simulate the system response. You can modify this MATLAB script by, for example, picking a point in this region, that is the region for which the system is not stable and by simulating the response. However, in the interest of brevity of this video tutorial, I will only show the st stable behavior. So I pick a point over here. Let's do that. The first step is to define our complex variable s. s is equal to transfer function of s. tf is MATLAB's function for defining transfer functions. Then I select a point in the stability region ki is equal to 1, and I select k like this. Then I define my plant, my controller, and I compute the closed-loop transfer function. I check the poles, I perform the step response analysis, and I perform the initial step or the initial state response. The step response of the closed-loop system is shown over here. We can clearly observe that the closed-loop system is asymptotically stable, that is, if we want to achieve, for example, 1, asymptotically we can see that the response of the system oscillates and after approximately 150 seconds it reaches the value of 1. Similarly, here is the initial state response of the system. We can see that if we set some initial state in the system, in the closed loop system, we can see that this initial state will die out. This is another verification of the asymptotic stability of the closed-loop system. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.